look at the big picture you're not your thoughts you're not that person who's you know who can't hit their targets you're not that person who can't who's not good at selling you're not that person who who's struggling to make money that's not who you are we're not our thoughts yeah we are the creator of our thoughts we are creating our thoughts moment by moment which means we are so powerful Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast live here on TSC TV. I'm your host, Donald Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And the reason why I'm excited for this episode, we have a phenomenal guest. Her name is Nina Cook. Now, Nina is going to give an introduction to some of the amazing things that she's doing. But one of the things that Nina does that I'm a big believer in is that the way you think is going to definitely affect the way that you perform. And you've been hearing me talk about this this whole month because I'm so passionate about it. So Nina is going to talk to us about how we can overcome that fear that we might have of not selling during the challenging times of COVID. I know we're coming to the tail end of this pandemic, but you know, it's still continuing. You, not when, when it's all said and done, everyone is not going to just automatically have tons of money to spend. They have to build their business back up. But sometimes as sales rep, you may have this fear that is it the right time to connect with people or should I even be doing this stuff? I know we've been talking about it a lot, but Nina is going to give you some ideas about getting your mindset right, about how you can overcome those fears. So I won't take up much more of the time. She's going to go ahead and give a great introduction. Let's dive in. Welcome to the show, Nina. It's great to be here, Donald. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. I'm so excited to chat with you. And uh, today we're going to discuss how we can overcome the fear of having the conversation, um, especially sales reps having difficult conversations right now, or just the fear of going out and talking to a prospect. And I'm super excited to have you share some of those insights with us. But before we dive into all the fun stuff, why don't you tell us a little bit more about you and what you do, Nina? Absolutely. I work with entrepreneurs, their coaches, consultants, sales specialists, and I help them to overcome their fears. All of their blocks, everything, that conversation that they have in their head that tells them it's scary, it's scary to be visible, it's scary to do sales, it's scary to put yourself out there, it's scary to make offers, it's scary to ask for money, we're not good enough. I help them to overcome all of those mind gremlins, all those lies, so they can find out the truth about themselves, realize how amazing, how powerful, how magnificent they are, and then run their business from that place. Well, it seems like this is just perfect, just exactly what we need, all of us need. I don't care who you are, what kind of rep you, you are, what product you sell, if you're an entrepreneur, everyone does, I think you just hit on everyone, really. I think I'm gonna share this episode with my mom, for goodness sake. <laughs> She's not even in sales, <laughs> nothing there sales. So, but let's, let's go into it. Like why, where did this all come from? Or why do we have these fears? Can we start with that? Well, the fears are, a lot of them come in our childhood. When we, when we're born, we're pretty much a black slate. And mm -hmm. then we pick up other people's programming. And because we're so, we're not, we're not questioning before the age of seven. We're just taking everything in. We're like a sponge. We're absorbing without questioning. And we take in other people's fears and we take them on to be true. If it's true about them, then it must be true about us. If they find the world a scary place, then the world is a scary place. If our pet, sorry, carry on. I was going to say, if you give me an example and you sound like you're going into one, like uh, how do we, what are some of those things that we, we pick up from, from folks that we are around? Well, let me give you an example. Um, a child uh, wants his parents to play with him mm -hmm. or her, and the parents are busy. They'll say, oh, we'll get around to playing with you, but they don't get around to it. They're busy cooking, working, whatever it is. After a while, the child might start trying to figure out why their parents are too busy to play with them. They may think, well, maybe it's because I'm not important. That's why they don't want to spend time with me. And then they create a limiting belief within themselves, I'm not important. Mm. And that becomes a truth for them. And the problem is we grow into adults and we keep that so-called truth within us. It becomes part of our identity, it becomes part of who we are. I'm, my name is so-and-so and inside we say, I'm not important, you're not gonna be interested in me. And then we collect all this evidence to make this so-called lie become a truth because we always like to be right so we yes. have evidence when someone didn't listen to what we were saying or we put out offer no one was interested or we spoke up in a group and no one listened to us or our parents don't take much notice of us but they're much more interested in our siblings so we just create all this evidence to back up our limiting belief 
and many times we don't know we have a limiting belief but that's how we're operating that's how we're seeing the world that's how we create our perception of the world so if any two people were to look at exactly the same event they're looking at it not as it truly is which is a neutral event they're looking at it and putting their meaning on the event well that means that means uh, other people aren't going to be interested in me or that means that I'm not good enough. So we have this amazing way of constructing all these meanings about events and then living out our lives as if these made up meanings, these thoughts we've made up in our head are true. Mm, interesting. And I, I'll go back to the idea of these evidences that we, we apply or these evidences that we put in place. I can tell you that I've been in those situations right? and I, and they're usually, it's usually an excuse. <laughs> um, I can give you an example that I have. Uh, I was, I ran track in high school and I, I did, I did pretty decent. I have natural skills for running. Jimmy Ekanenaman. So we have some natural running skills there. But what happened though, I didn't practice as much as some of the other kids in some of the other organizations. And what I usually tell myself is that because I am a, uh, you know, my school is not as good as their school, then I can't perform as good as that school, if that makes sense. When in actuality, it was, if I had put in the time, if I put in the practice, it doesn't matter really. I mean, the coach is always important, but still yet I felt that there was a limited mindset. So when I didn't perform, when I didn't win a race, but I did second, I always felt good about being second. Like, ah, my school doesn't perform that well anyways, and I didn't practice that much anyway, so... I'm good at second. I'm a B athlete. And I always said that. And I remember when I went to regionals one year and I didn't make the qualifications, I felt bad, but then I also settled on that because of all these other quote unquote, these evidences in the past. And, um, yeah, it's, it's sad how that happened. But I, later on in my life, I was like, I'm not going to live with like that anymore. I had to change it. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. So there was a shift in your mindset that enabled you to be aware. First of all, that was a pattern that you've been living yeah. and then to have that intention, I'm going to change that pattern. It's not serving me. And then you made that change. And it's so interesting because you said a couple of really great things. You said you, you decided you weren't going to settle for that anymore. No, well, we do <laughs> settle for things. We think, well, this is my limit. I can't really go beyond that. Other people can. I can't charge any more than that because people aren't going to pay me. Yeah. I can't make offers right now in this, you know, pandemic environment because people don't have the budget and it wouldn't be appropriate for me to make that offer right now. And so we come up with all these excuses, but there are entrepreneurs who are absolutely thriving right now. I have a client and she set herself a target of six new clients in April. She has booked five. Mm. I've booked clients this month. So we can make excuses to ourselves and say, well, I, I won't do anything. I don't want to do any real activity because I just want to let this pass and then see what happens at the end of it. But if we do that, we're not going to have a business at the end of this. No, we have to carry on taking action because we still understand our value and we understand there are people out there who need what we have because we can solve their problems and they are willing to invest. Some people aren't, it's true. Some people absolutely will not invest right now, but they're still people if they can see the value, what we have to offer them and it will help them to solve their problem, they are definitely investing. And you know, the other parts of that too, it's, it's interesting that you, you bring that up. I find that it there's well, it's something that I'm learning right now if a sales rep can make it through a COVID-19 and set appointments and still close a deal, that sales rep can close deal and make appointment in any climate. So I feel this is that almost like the litmus test that's going to weed out the people who are really sellers and the people who are order takers, or the people who have the stamina and the capability of succeeding and the ones who don't have the mindset or the, 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 the attitude or, or the mentality to be able to thrive in this, uh, in a tough environment. I mean, it's really challenging. So I, I'm 100% with you on that. So, but here's a thought now. I'm on a team and my team has, everyone on my team has this mindset, even from coming down from the top. My, my manager said, ah, don't worry. You're not going to get a hold of anyone. Don't reach out. How do I break out of that? How do I, if, I, if I'm a sales rep listening to this podcast, how do I get past this and uh, with this environment that I'm on? 
Yeah, that's a really great question because it's so easy to be influenced by the people we're surrounded by yeah. and to take on their thinking to be true. So I would say about that to know that you have a choice, you have a choice in how you think, as it does everyone. So all these unique thinkers are sitting around you in your team and they're all coming at this with their own limiting beliefs. So that's one thing. And that's that's not right or wrong. When no one's being right or wrong about this, it's just that you don't have to buy into that. You have a choice. So you can intentionally set your own thinking about this. And set thinking that serves you and makes you feel good and gives you a feeling of hope, of optimizing, and that you can take action. The most important mindset work I do with entrepreneurs is that I enable them to take action. I enable them to get over past overwhelm and procrastination so they can take action in their business without setting appointments, without doing sales calls, without making offers you're not going to be able to keep your business going. Yeah. So if the people around you are saying, don't bother, nothing's going to work right now, people aren't interested, you can still go ahead and do take action knowing that you have value. And that often is a numbers game. The more people you call, the more appointments you're likely to set. And that if you can, as you said, keep going through this difficult time, keep a courageous, resilient mindset going, be okay with no's. You may get more no's mm. than you normally would, but you know that's a step closer to a yes. We all know that's true. If you can keep going during this time and you build up resilience and you build up appointments, etc., then you are going to come out of this so much stronger than the rest of your team who aren't doing anything. So I would say, let that talk be their business. Don't get involved in their business. Stay in your own business. Your business is to know your value, to know that people need what you have, and to keep taking action because that's continuous action is the backbone of any business. We have to have that. And it's just knowing that you have something really valuable to bring to the table. Yeah. Absolutely. And that people, it's up to them how they respond to your offer. So some people say no, some people say yes. So don't take it personally. Don't take rejection personally. It's never, ever personal. Yeah. All that person is saying is, yes, I like what you have, or no, it's not right for me right now. But they're not rejecting you and who you are. So, who I mean, you are is intact. Yeah. I, I, I love that vision. I love that idea and, and seeing that. But how do I go about making that happen right now? I mean, like... I'm sitting here again, the sales rep, or I heard this episode and I'm like, man, Nina is hitting on some really good stuff. How do I transform my thinking? Um, what are, when you're working with an entrepreneur, well, let's use as an example, you're working with an entrepreneur or a sales rep and we're coming to you and I'm your coaching client. What are you going to do right now? Or the first thing you're going to have me do to get past these limiting beliefs? I know you, you, you went into some of it already, but I love little role plays and specific examples. So let's try that. Okay. So if you were to come to me, I would say to you, what's your goals? Let's get clear on your goals. And your goal may be, I don't know, maybe let's just pl pluck a figure out of there. Say 30K a month. That's what right. you want to generate in income. I can say, okay, so that's your goal. What thinking is stopping you from achieving that? And then you would give me your thinking. Well, I don't think anyone's interested in what I have right now. People don't have any money. People don't want to spend anything. Um, they find what I do is irrelevant. People, you know, I find it really difficult to get hold of people. All of this stuff. So we, I would then help you because that's my superpower. I help people find their limiting beliefs. So they will just give me a, a stream of thinking. I say, okay, so your limiting beliefs are. Uh, around you know people don't have money that you don't have enough value to offer that you can't you know ask for that much no one's going to pay you that much etc and then for each limiting belief i'll say okay rate these beliefs out of 10 so the more you agree with it the higher your number so we can find your strongest limiting beliefs that's where we always start mm -hmm. and then i will take you through a really simple process to help you to remove that limiting belief from your subconscious once and for all permanently and replace it with a new empowering truth so for example, um, I've been working with clients and so one of the biggest limiting beliefs that's out there right now is it's inappropriate to make offers because people yes. can't afford me. And that is a story, it's an excuse that we tell ourselves. And then once you can remove that limiting belief and then you have the new empowering belief, it could be something around, well, there are people out there who are willing to invest in themselves if they think it's the right fit for them. 
when you go out with that empowering belief, you automatically remove that mind clutter that's stopping you. Mm. And then you can start focusing on what you want, what you can bring to the table, because your focus is off the, no one's going to buy this. Your focus is now suddenly, how can I help that person? How can I transform that person's life? And when you're coming in from that belief, then you are automatically going to be looking to see, okay, which... Where is my market right now? Who are the people I can really help? Let's find those niches, those pockets of people. And maybe it's pivoting. Maybe it's um, coming up with a new angle. So maybe if there is an opportunity for you to change and rethink what you're doing to be able to serve a new community, because there's lots of new opportunities out here right now. Yeah. And it's the people who are looking for those opportunities, they're taking action on them and being flexible and nimble they're the ones who are suddenly finding a new market. So um, there's a client of mine who does um, virtual retreat, sorry, real retreats. All she ever does is take people dolphin watching. Now oh, she's cool. pivoted to doing virtual retreats and she got 30 people to sign up for a virtual retreat and that's gonna be a permanent part of her sales funnel from now on. She takes them on a virtual retreat and then she books them onto a real retreat. She's pivoted and she's created a new market. So it's absolutely possible for everyone. It's amazing, you know, what you, you just shared with that. Probably this client would never had tried that before because the limiting belief she probably would have had was no one would want to do that. But then put into the circumstances where you have to survive. And she has this coach that's helping her, giving her this mindset to say, you know, why not? She was able to, you're emboldened to try things. And I think that's one of the unique and fun and exciting things right now. We can try new things in our businesses. I did a training that I didn't have to travel to. It was absolutely amazing. I did it virtually, a workshop. I stood here in my um, home office and I stood for two and a half hours as we were doing this workshop, typically that I probably do in person. And this was at two different locations, but we were able to have two locations in one location and I didn't have to pay the travel fees or you know that was built into our cost. But anyways, the, the point is it worked out amazing and I never thought to do that before, but it's an option. And I thought before my limiting belief, no one's going to pay attention. They're not going to be too, they're not going to be intu uh, intuitive to, it, to the, the presentation, not going to learn as much, but I probably had more people engage and learning than I typically have in a typical workshop because they, uh, these folks wanted to be there. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's so exciting because there are definitely opportunities around yeah. and it's for the people who will grab them. It's for the people who think, ah, okay, I can see that. And it's the expansive mindset. I can make this work for me. That rather than just shutting down and contracting, it's expanding and staying in your values, staying in your power and knowing you are in control. Because when you know you're in control, that's when the magic really starts to happen. Yeah, it, it is true. Um, staying in that, uh, that room of control, staying in that, that area of of your of your strength and again it's kind of going back to what you said about this this idea of the superpower um i feel that each and every one of us once we have that understood understand what is holding us back it empowers us to then to say well if that was holding me back from accomplishing this thing well was it holding me back from accomplishing this thing as well and i, I feel that it gives you or give liberates you or give you the um the confidence or authority to keep pushing forward under any other circumstances that might be around yeah, we limit ourselves. We go through life almost wearing blinkers. So we can't see the real big picture. We're just seeing a tiny portion of it all the time. And because our thinking works in patterns, we have that same pattern of thinking that we bring to, to events, to things that we're going to be doing, to activities. We're bringing the same old, tired, old, negative thinking. I can't do that. Other people can do it, but I can't. Other people are better than me. I'm not as good as other people. We keep bringing in. So the first step is always awareness. Finding out what's your pattern of thinking, your pattern of behavior that's holding you, that's stopping. Because salespeople, they have, there's unlimited, untapped potential for just about every salesperson. Yeah. And the only thing that could ever stop them from really digging deep and being the best they can be is themselves. They're the only people getting their way can have the best, they can have the best scripts, they can have the best mentors, they can have the best prospect list, but it won't work until they get out of their own way, until they st stop self-sabotaging with their thinking. And the best salespeople in the world, they're not, they don't have a soup, they don't have any magical powers that other people don't have. All they've done is they've worked on their mindset, they've taken lots of action, and as they've built up their courage and their resilience, they've just aimed higher and higher and higher. And But when they get to the next level, they may 
get resistance again. And then they work through those blocks and then they go up to the next level and then they get some more resistance. And they work through those blocks. So it's just an ongoing process. Mindset is a lifelong ongoing process, which is why I love it because that's where we get our growth from. That's where we stretch our comfort zone. And that's where we have the most fun. Oh man, so true. I'm working on an episode right now and I'm putting into, we're discussing Michael Phelps. So I'm, I'm alluding to this now, but uh, in, you know, one of the things that Michael Phelps did is the replacement picture. Um, idea. So when he, I'm sure you've heard about this story, but when he was swimming, his coach early on gave him this idea. said, play this tape of you winning and what's happening and how you feel and, and so forth. And I, I started adopting that in, I mean, I'm not perfect. I'm nowhere near it. I can't come and say I have a bulletproof mindset. I let crap kids in my head at times, but I try and strive to push those things out. But playing that replacement picture of what that situation will be like when I'm in it, what is going to be like at the end of the quarter? Am I going to hit that number that we've set, you know, for whatever is it, 100K or whatever that number might be? Am I, what's that feeling like? And, and playing that picture as opposed to saying, oh, crap, we're in no, no, March and it was bad. <laughs> so we're not going to hit, we're not definitely not going to hit success then. But you just push through that. You have that replacement picture. Yes. I mean, yeah. You know. Any other words of advice or tips or strategies that you would give us to help us to overcome our fears um, before we wrap up today? I think, look at the big picture. Look at the big picture. You're not your thoughts. You're not that person who's, you know, who can't hit their targets. You're not that person who can't, who's not good at selling. You're not that person who, who's struggling to make money. That's not who you are. We're not our thoughts. Yeah. We are the creator of our thoughts. We are creating our thoughts moment by moment, which means we are so powerful. And once we realize that we're not our thoughts because we can change our thoughts in the next moment, so that's not who we are, but we are actually creating them, then you can start thinking, okay, what do I really want in my life? Mm. And what thoughts will help me to get there quickest, the easiest, and then start bringing those thoughts into your thinking. The easiest way I know is having someone work with you to help you to remove those limiting beliefs one by one. But you can absolutely do a lot of this work for yourself as well. And whichever way you choose to do it, pay attention to your thinking. It's our most overlooked asset. We rush past it to do strategies and implementation and things. But look at your mindset first. It is your greatest gift. It's your magic wand. And it will once you change your thinking, it will change your life. And that is absolutely 100% true. Oh, I believe you. Nina, this was amazing. I love it. Folks out there listening to this and they're like, man, Donald, I need to get in touch with this lady. How did they get in touch with you? How did they stay connected with you after this episode? Well, I have a brand new gift that I've just created, which I'm very, very excited about. And it's the Millionaire Mindset Scorecard. Ooh. And this gives you an assessment of where your thinking is right now. If you're heading towards, if you want to make a million dollars, you'll find out exactly what's stopping, what's getting in your way and what, you, you, and what in your thinking is helping you right now. So it gives you a fantastic um, snapshot of exactly where you are, what work you need to do on your mindset and it gives you lots of analysis and help to get you there. Well done. Well, we want to get that. How do we go about doing that? It's easy. The link is Nina Cook, Nina, N-I-N-A Cook, C-W-O-K-E dot co dot U-K forward slash scorecard. All right. Well, we'll put that in our show notes so folks can get access to it. Nina, Fantastic. thank you again for coming on the show today. We appreciate you. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you, Donald. That was Nina Cook. Go ahead and connect with Nina. You can find all the details down below in this video, or you can go ahead and go to our website. Please also, while you're here, I want to encourage you guys to subscribe. If you enjoy this content, if you enjoy it, if you enjoyed hearing this, this great information from guests like Nina, just go ahead and click subscribe down below and hit that bell so you get notified every single time we produce a great episode. All of our episodes are great. But Nina is doing some phenomenal things and I want you to connect with her as well. Find her contact information down below as well in the comments. The other thing I want you to be aware of, our friends over at Crumble, you've been seeing their images pop up all over our website and also right here on this uh, video down below. But Crumble, they are an amazing partner. They have a CRM. And I know some of you might say, Donald, I have a CRM. I'm good, I ain't trying to switch. That's cool, stay with your CRM. However, this is a CRM that, uh, how can I say this? It's uh, it's it's lucrative. It is very um, inexpensive. 
They have a free version. And I'm not talking about a free version where it's super light, you can't do anything. This version, you can do pretty much everything with it. So I want you to check it out. Find out all the details, you can find it below. Or just simply go to crumble, C-R-M-B-L-E dot com slash T-S-E. Again, C-R-M-B-L-E dot com slash T-S-E. But you can see the link as well pop up here and take advantage of that tool. Uh, you're going to love it. Um, as always, I bring folks on like Nina. I share content like this. I talk about great topics relative to sellers like you because I want to help you. I want you to succeed. I know the challenging times we're in and I know how difficult it is to, to really thrive right now. But great sellers like you are going to succeed as always. And I want to make sure I continue to help you. Our goal is to help you to find more of those ideal customers. We want to teach you what to say when you meet with those customers so you can build value. We want you to close more deals. But naturally, we want you to go out each and every single day and do big things. Thanks so much for watching. See you. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video today. If you enjoyed the content, I ask you to go ahead and hit that like button, that thumbs up at the bottom right hand corner. Also to make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. This way we'll keep you up to date with all the latest sales strategies, latest tools and things that are going to help you to not only find more prospects, but to close more deals. Thanks so much.